We are back in Barcelona for the PokerStars European Poker Tour and our coverage of day four of the main event continues with 33 players remaining. And we saw some pretty intense action on our feature table during the last level. We saw Pasquale Braco take the chip lead once again. He still has the biggest stack in the room, 4.6 million. Alexander Iverson back up to second with 4.1 million. Lou, Tenkate, and Yelichka make up the top five. And we're keeping the same lineup on the main stage. We still have Braco, Patur, Odin, Sidhu, Mick, and Bustillo. I'm James Hartigan alongside Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. And we have got blinds of 20,000, 40,000 with a 40K big blind ante. And that means we are now playing for the first time today slightly below <laughs> a 50 big blind average. But I'd expect it won't be long until we've had two or three bust outs, Joe, and we're back right where we want to be. Yeah, man, just a great structure to this tournament. Think about all the tournaments you play in various other smaller casinos. It's like 28 big blinds at its best. Most of the time, it's like a 23 big blind average. That's why you play the big boys. Pocket aces for Leandro Bustillo. Cully Sidhu picks up another potentially costly, at least second best hand at this point. It's got to be a little bit wary of the raise off the short stack from first position. Dio is the shortest stack at the table. Entirely possible. Sadu tries to isolate the short stack. Looks like he is reaching for those raising chips. And once we see the re-raise, he is going to be committed. Pretty dreamy spot for Bastillo, so short the after the break. Three bet is the 230,000. And isolation will, in fact, take place. We have mixed cards, right? We do. I think he was just uh, taking a second to see how many players are left. 33 left in the field. I believe there's another pay jump at 31. Oh, makes sense. I can get Bustillo not wanting to just snap shove, but he's probably realized at this point that his opponent is priced into call. He looks so sick about it. There it is. It is. 345,000 more to call. Just under 15 big blinds. I don't think Sadu is going to be able to get away from the eights. Complained about not getting any good hands. Now he's getting second best hands. And he is not that happy about the call. I, I don't know what he expected. Now, you can, obviously, you don't have to expect to be up against aces, but he seemed rather nonplussed to be shoved on there. And I think when someone opens from that size stack and you three bet them, I think they're going to end up putting all in more often than not. Aces against eights, set over set. At least it went in pre-flop. <laughs> Either way he played it, he was going to get doubled through unless quads end up materializing on the river. Unless there's an eight on this fifth street. Bastia will double up 
We're gonna have to name change his name from Bustillo to Double Up EO, right? Huh? Because he didn't he didn't bust. It's just uh, okay. We'll we'll work on it. Sorry, I was I, I was muted there. I actually got very excited about it and thought it rolls off the tongue. <laughs> 1.2 million now for Leandro Bastillo. Coley yeah. Sadu, 1.755, still 43 big blinds. I mentioned there are four tables left in play. This is one of them. Big hand developing here. Uh, some time bank chips have been used. Adam Johnson versus Ben Farrell. Johnson has put Farrell all in. The effective stack about 400K. And we think Farrell may be, once again, just trying to use those time bank chips. He knows he's gonna be all in, hoping that maybe someone goes broke at another table. It's a 6K pay jump. The board is five, four, three, two diamonds. Old mess of time bank cards. That means that this hand's been going on for a while. That's 30 seconds for each of those red rectangles. And there he is, Farrell finally all in. Shows 9-4 for a pair of fours. 6-5 for Johnson for a pair of fives and a straight draw. The turn is a six. That's two pair for Johnson. River is a three. Three pair for Johnson. Ben Farrell eliminated in 32nd place, 31,000 euros. Everyone else has just made another 5K. Pocket tens for Balakrishna Patur. Oh. It's a, it's a CPU upgrade to ace king of clubs. So we're about 55 big blinds deep to start this hand. Hands versus ace king. It's a little bit tricky you know, for the tour. Huh? You where He's open from, from where the re-raises come from. He might be tempted to pull the trigger here pre-flop with the tens. Don't think we're ever gonna see him fall. So the question is, do we see him go all in and we see a monster flip or we see him call and we go post-flop heads up. I two tens in this spot, they'd be in the muck already. Looks like he's gonna click it back though. Sure is. Four bet alert. Bam, 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 bam. Didn't know you had the soundboard. Yep, that's my that's my Vegas DJ noise. It's Teresa's birthday! Bam 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 bam! Four bet to 905,000. Hold on. There's the all in from Suitsor. Uh oh. And Pator is not insta calling. Suitsor got to feel pretty good about it. He's going to know now that he's not up against the aces or kings unless he's getting slow rolled with 31 left. Which obviously not happening. He is getting pretty indifferent now. Kind of slow rolled with the tens. Are you really putting in a million to fold? I mean, it, it doesn't seem like the wisest decision. I definitely would have preferred flat call if my intention was to four bet and then fold. But at the same time, when somebody five bets all in at this stage of the tournament, our tens going to be good that frequently. We can see he's got ace king, but it's going to okay. be something like ace king and queens. All right. Torres now asked for a count. That does pause his clock. He has used the time bank card. Thank you. 
supportive. He can ask for a count. He can reconsider. This is poker, man. We're playing for $1.659 million for first place. Oh, I like this move. <laughs> Rude. He's talking to you. Yeah, it's short. Oh! Short? Yep. I think he realized that he might be able to actually make him fall the pair here. 10 seconds. Yeah, I mean, if Sutsor can say, yeah, I'll show and not have to flip and just pick up a million chips, why not, right? Yeah, happy days. All right. He folds. Wow. He shows. Chop. <laughs> Chop. I think a chop is different than a flip, my friend. Could have gone in. <laughs> I could have aces and kings as well. Mm -hmm. I played the same. So Pator does put in a million chips to fold. Sorry, I keep saying a million. It was 905,000. This is the difference. Suits are up to 3.2 million. Second and chips on the Almost table. Did. <laughs> Almost did. Put her down to 34 big blinds. I was suited though. It's a very strong can. Oh boy. Mary and Mick, very patient Complete. throughout this level. Finally found the hand he was looking for. Ace, queen, off suit. All in over the top of the raise from Balakrishna Patur. But off first is the dealer, I reckon he's just gonna have to call. Obviously, it could be another setback after the million chip four bet with the tens, but I just don't see how he gets away with a check here. The only clue is just right, good luck. how tight Mick's been, but Finton is correct. <laughs> Turn him over. <laughs> Look how stressed out Mick is. Don't make him wait. Show him your hand. It's Domination Nation. Make the big favorite to double up. Oh boy. Oh boy. So not even one queen will be enough to retake the lead here for Mary and Mick. Well, that's a start. He's going to need one of the two remaining queens. Runner, runner, queen balls. Uh, no good. Mary and Mick eliminated. 30th place. 36,550 euros. Yeah. Be careful, I think you have one blue. Yeah, still So Odin's called the raise, and Pator somehow manages to still be involved in virtually every hand at this feature table and flops the nut flush draw. Top pair for Odin, second pair for Brocco, heart draw for Patur. <laughs> Worlds are colliding. Patur with his standard, should be checking, but gonna tank for a while move. There it is. Patented. And it is the hand with the least amount of equity. Firing out. Now, to be fair, he did have the pre-flop betting lead. Makes it 175,000. 
What do you think of this sizing, uh, Finn? It seems a little big to me, considering there are two other folks in this hand who this board is also likely to have hit. Yeah, I think I probably would have elected to just check. I think it's a little bit dicey to see bet versus the small blind and the big blind. Yeah. It's kind of hard to get value across multiple streets with ace-jack multi-way. Sometimes even hard to get value on one street. Question is, does Patur want to start playing this flush draw quickly? Get a lot of chips in with a raise, or is he just going to call? Fenton, if he raises, I got to get a wee out of you. Wee! <laughs> there it is. That's a stack of 25K chips. 500,000 is the raise. And that, you know, that deserves two. Wee! I think for Braco, this is a very easy fold. Slam dunk fold. This is one of those folds you go, please, just take them. Go. Just, I don't. I'm so sorry I was even this hand to begin with. Nay. There Not he goes. So straightforward for Odin. This could be gut check time. We will not go down without a fight. Today is the day we celebrate our Independence Day. One and a half million chips in the middle as we go to the turn. It's a nine, so it is not a flush for Pater. He's got a pair now. Our Dean checks. And Fenton, do you have any choice at this point but to keep on blasting at this? I mean, Batur, in his mind, maybe feels on the nine that he has a little bit of showdown, but it's so unlikely given the flop action. If he was to shove, I think Odin is going to be in a horrendous spot. I mean, King 10's got there, 10 8's got there, that maybe occasionally would check raise. He's all wow, in! He pulls the trigger. I'm going to do a short version this time. Yeah, they count. We. Problem is. With the big blind defend, he has so many two pairs. He can have sets, he can have straights now. Would he play those hands so fast? I mean, on the nine of diamonds, it's not the ideal turn card if you have a hand like queen four or jack four. It's just so hard to know what someone's gonna do with two pair. I mean, I think... me again. I mean, it was brutal last time. Good. Fold top pair. Well, I enjoy. Why didn't they still last to hands on TV or not? Wee! Yeah, that was a big one. <laughs> oh man. We have had a raise from Bracco with Jack Ten suited, a call from Cully to do with King Jack suited, and here comes. Balakrishna Patur with 8-6 off in the big blind. Three-way to the flop. And that flop is 10-9-9. Bracco out in front at the moment, but Sidhu's got to be pretty happy with this board as well. King Jack of clubs, two over cards, a gut shot straight draw. One club on there for him for the backdoor flush draw as well. Patur with a gut shot of his own. Starts with a check. Right. 
Racco continuing into two opponents for 155,000. As you say, Sprague, he's got the best hand for now, but I guess both these guys might call at least once. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I think once, um, let's say Sidhu is putting in chips here with the King Jack of Clubs, which I assume he will, I think folding will be very tight, it does make Pator's decision behind a little less appealing. Like, he has two unders to the board and a gut shot, whereas two overs to the board and a gut shot is, uh, is just that much more desirable. So Braco does call and Pator now, the very weak draw, wouldn't be surprised to see him get out of the way. I would be surprised to see him check race. It's a call from Pateur, and we are still three-way going to the turn. What's going to work in Pateur's favour is, given he was getting a good price in the big blind, he probably has more nines than anybody else. <laughs> And also, he can do that. Exactly. It's such an easy decision when you know you're going to get there on the turn. Do you know how he knew he was going to get there? Because the seven is always coming. We are in Barcelona. Now he'll reach for chips. Looks like he's going to lead out, which I like. I think it's very easy for this turn to get pot controlled. Bracco having bet and been called twice, a lot of his tens might decide to check back the turn. So Pateur's not going to let that happen. Three hundred k into eight hundred and seventy k. That's Bracco feeling about his pair of 10s now. When he calls, Kuli Sadu folds, heads up to the river. The inconsequential deuce of clubs. So Bracco now really needs to find ways that Pateur might be bluffing. If he called a flop with Queen Jack, he might bluff that. But a hand like 7-8 for the open ender probably doesn't bluff. Jack-8 gets there. 8-6 that Pator actually has gets there as well. So it's a little tricky to find bluffs that Pator might bet turn and river with. I think if he gets a good price, he might look it up. But anything on the larger side, he might be able to get away. 550,000. Roughly one third pot. Frustrating bet size. It's going to use a time bank chip. Very difficult spot this because you are getting a good price. You still have top pair. You have the jack, which blocks jack eight. But you've got to hope your opponent's called queen jack and bluffs it, maybe king queen and bluffs it. It's not too much else. Or is making some strange bet with a hand like 10 eight that you're ahead of. He may decide that for the price, enough of that's happening, enough of the time that he can look it up. Good decision by Pasquale Bracco. Folding the Jack-10. And we have a new table chip leader, Balakrishna Patur, now playing 4.3 million. An 86 big blind stack. Let's have a look at what just happened at one of the outer tables. Adam Johnson gets it in with ace-4 against ace-5. Four on the flop, five on the turn. Rui Sousa eliminates Adam Johnson. And now we are down to the final three tables. As well as being the birthplace of the EPT, Barcelona is also the hometown of Ramon Calilas, the Spanish player who won the inaugural PokerStars Players No Limit Hold'em Championship for $5.1 million.
It's just been announced the PSPC will be back in August 2020 at Casino Barcelona. And once again, there's the chance to win free entry to the tournament over the next 12 months. For your chance to win a Platinum Pass to PSPC 2020, head to PokerStars. Here is the new feature table. Here's the new lineup on the main stage. These are the players in seat order rather than chip order. The biggest stack of the feature table is still Balakrishna Patur with 4.5 million. No super short stacks. The low man is Simon Brandstrom. He's got 25 big blinds. We've got Stefan Jedlicka, Shannon Shaw, Ike Haxton, Johan Starakas, who I remember from the early days of the EPT, making a deep run along with many other Swedish players this year. Raising it up. Three bet to 400k. So as you mentioned earlier, James, uh, North is going right? for this bigger sizing. This is what we see here, four, four times the size of the initial raise, given that he's out of position. Seven of clubs, very low down in the opening range. It looks like we're having a call. It is suited, it is connected. And Yedlitschka is in position. So heads up to the flop. Seven, five, deuce. Top pair for Yedlitschka, but Suzor way ahead with his over pair. Very good board for Suzor, of course. No ace, not particularly connected. I think his initial thoughts are going to be, how can he size up so that he can get the chips in on good runouts on flop, turn, and river? And that means he doesn't have to go particularly big. Definitely go for around one-third pot size bet. Keep his opponent's range nice and wide. He should be way ahead of most hands. Suzor continuing for 525k into a pot of 900k. Wow, he raises all in. I did not see that coming. Yeah, and that's a huge pot. Shoves for 2.34 million. Snap caught by Susor. There's 5.6 million in the middle, Spraggy. And Susor's only got five outs. Yeah, Lichka, rather, the player at risk. Looking for a seven or a six. Well, that was a sweat. It's never easy. Additional lights on the turn, a straight draw. Yeah, has eights and threes working for him as well. An eight, a seven, a six, or a three needed to save Stefan Jedlicka. Still in mild shock over how this played out. And with the nine on the river, Suzor wins a huge pot, and Stefan Jedlicka is eliminated. Wow, he looks very frustrated with himself. And Suzor's got to be chip leader now. 6.9 million. Nearly 140 big blinds. Just before we lost Stefan Jedlicka, this happened on one of the two outer tables. Jonas Tenkate got it in with ace jack against Kings. And spoiler alert. Barry Greenstein does not make an appearance. Kings hold, and Jonas was eliminated in 24th place. So we lost him, we lost Stefan Jedlicka. We're now down to 22 players in the EPT Barcelona main event. Could definitely make argue to move all in, argument to move all in with his hand. Certainly play it for a call as well. Ace-5 suited 
come along for 75,000. So now we've got Martin Suzor in the big blind with King Queen, and he's calling as well. These three players will go to the flop. And that flop is King Four Deuce with two clubs. Top pair for Suzor. Flush draw for Pateur. Wheel draw for Brandstrom. Yep, everybody with a little bit of something. Check, check to the initial razor. Pator with the flush draw. It's going to continue for 100k. Ramstrom in a little bit of a tricky spot. He decides just to let it go. He does have a player still to act behind him. Definitely worth considering. So we're now heads up. Suzor will be do, doing anything but folding. He calls. Heads up to the turn. Which is the ace of diamonds. Suzor now a 4-1 to favourite. Checks a second time. Pateur slows down here. Spraggy takes a free card. Well, he can definitely have an ace himself if he's continuation betting something like ace-x of clubs. But he's going to be more than aware that Suzor is capable of having the ace too if he decides to peel the flop with just an ace high versus a continuation bet. That said, Pator does have queen high and a strong draw. His queen high probably not going to win at showdown too often, so we see him bluff again on the turn for 225k. Certainly not ideal for the king-queen to see an ace, but he's still ahead of a fair amount of bluffs. <clears throat> Got to stick around to a river card, and again, that's where the decision's going to get tougher. But Pator does not break out. He makes the flush. <laughs> Suzor checks for the third time. There is one million in the middle. Crucially, Suzor has the king of clubs in his hand, which may mean that he feels it's a little bit less likely Pator has a flush, since a lot of Pator's flushes are going to be hands like king queen of clubs, king jack of clubs, king ten, king nine. But with that king of clubs, it does take a lot of those combinations out of Pator's range. Oh, Spraggy, if Joe Stapleton were here right now, you'd be getting his speech about blockers. He claims they're not a real thing, but having the king of clubs here, definitely an advantage for Suzor. The tour has gone just shy of half pot, 450,000. In fact, that king of clubs might be the deciding factor. A lot of players, if the decision is close, let's say he gets here with king queen and he thinks that he has to call with a king some of the time because his opponent's going to bluff six, seven of diamonds or a hand like jack 10 or queen 10, then often you'll call with the king queen with the king of clubs and fold without it because that blocker does take those flushes out of your opponent's range. So if it's at the margin, you definitely need to consider that king of clubs. And it could sway him one way or the other. Of course, more likely to sway him in this instance towards making the call. Makes it. Some bad news. Pator's rivered the flush and a near two million chip pot is his. Oh. That's massive. That's handy. Pateur adds more than a million to his stack. Yeah. And there's less distance between them now. Suzor still table chip leader with 6.2 million. But Pateur is up over 5.5 million, playing more than 110 big blinds. This is Alexander Everson versus Jerry Odeen. We pick up the action on the flop. Odeen has bet 150,000. Everson has raised to 475,000. 
and Odin has played a time bank card. The board is 4-4-3. Four, four, four of clubs, four of diamonds, three of spades. Facing that check raise from Alexander Everson, Jerry Odin will call 475,000 apiece. They're going to the turn. which is the nine of clubs, and that puts a flush draw out there. A reminder, Everson, check raise the flop. And it looks like Everson has checked the turn. The action is now on Odin. Dean checks behind. The river is the seven of spades. So the board, nine, seven, four, four, three. Action on Everson. Who is staring a hole through Odin right now. He verbally declares all in. He shoves on Jerry Odin. And looking at the stacks, it's clear that Everson has Odin covered. So this is all in to call. And the clock is ticking. Odin still has a few time bank cards. He's played one of them. Buys an additional 30 seconds on the clock. He calls here and he's wrong. He is out. Plays a second time bank card. Tournament defining moments. <laughs> Iverson still not moved a muscle. He calls all in. <laughs> Pocket nines, that's a full house. Odin tables ace queenie hero calls with ace high. He is wrong. And Jerry Odin is eliminated in 22nd place. Cash is out for 52,000 euros. And Albert Everson will now be playing a stack of 6.4 million. Huge pot. Bad time to be wrong. What a hand. Isaac Axton Haxton, ace 10 suited, has Pateur dominated, has 30 big blinds to start the hand, has maybe the greatest poker mind currently in the world. It's a big advantage to have most of the time. I prefer him in a windier setting. Ha 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 ha.
Ike, a part of the classic outdoor PCA final table. Back when he used to look like a vampire. Check nine for Monbrou and Masseau. And not the true blood kind of vampire that Masseau looks like. We're talking sunblock to go outside type of vampire. Starackers ditches the King Jack in the big blind. Despite some getting some pretty solid pot odds. That is tight, eh, Spraggy? Yeah, it is. You're up against none of the gun open and Isaac Hackson flatting in position. It, it's not a particularly attractive hand, but you're right. I think for a good price, King Jack could certainly come along. Big flop for Pator here. Two <coughs> overs in the flush draw, back door straight draw. Ike with not an awful lot, but he does have still ace high and of course the wheel draw. And a 10 would be very bad for Patur. Seems like he certainly it... uh, made some hands today at the feature table. Yeah, he sure has. Patur bets for less than his pre-flop raise, 85,000. Yeah, really small continuation bet here. Less than a quarter of this pot. Sorry, fewer than a quarter of this pot. Cameraman agrees. Fewer than five seconds for Ike to act. He makes the call. Very small sizing, has a sight and the wheel draw. Two overs. It's almost like a Comes check. Along. Board pairs now. Nothing for either player. Watch Pator that. from under the gun still has all of the over pairs in his range. Maybe Haxton three bets some of them. I say Pator bets 400,000 minimum on this street. I like it. I mean, it's it's quite a common strategy to go really small on the flop, keep your opponent's range wide, and then bomb the turn, really put them to the test. It would also set up, if he wants to, a potential river bluff. Not a bomb. I was off. Still small. Still a quarter pot bet. <laughs> What's the strat here? Keep them guessing. Look, if you're going to play against one of the greatest poker minds in the history of poker minds. Get funky with your chicken. Get loose with your goose. Get weird with your beard. What might be a little confusing to Ike is given stacks, if Pator had a hand like tens, jacks, queens, kings, or aces, that he would size up to try and go flop, turn, and river all in. So when he goes these small sizings, it might be indicative that he doesn't have a real hand. And I think Ike is pouncing on that perceived weakness. He's raising it up to 600,000 on the turn with very minimal connection to the board. You might expect Ike to bluff here if he has ace-10 of diamonds, maybe ace-10 of spades. Ace-10 of clubs bluffing must mean that Ike thinks he's getting really out of line. Yeah, I mean, what value hands does someone play this way other than quad fours? <coughs> Boom! Wow. Three bet on the turn from Pator. Ike's a non-believer right back at you. All in. Ike has to fold. That is a huge three bet with just 10 high. I told you, you got to get loose with your goose. If you're going to take on Hollywood, Axon, Haxon. Outer table hand involving Gael Bauman. She is all in. <laughs> Action on Pasquale Bracco. Both these folks were at our feature table earlier today, although I don't think together. Who's this caught in the middle here? Joe Moawad has called already, excuse me. And Bracco also calls, so action on the side. 
Okay, the lady's all in. Lots of chips down that end of the table. Gail's action is complete. Eight, six, deuce, rainbow. Action Moawad. Here comes a stack. That's 500,000. Rocco's all in. I'm not sure who's got who covered. How's that for a side pot? <laughs> so he looks pained. Moawad, Foldawad. Rocco collects the side pot. It's aces for Bauman. Moawad. What? Six, eight, two pair. Bauman can catch a second pair herself or an ace. No dice, however. Wow. Wow, we. Moawad says he folded ace eight on the flop. Hi, ya. Rocco attempts the sportsmanlike thing. Bauman, understandably, a little shell shocked from that. Ace is cracked by eight six. Ike Haxton with a hand that is most certainly ahead of Shore's range. Plenty of folks to act behind him. Ike with not so many BBs himself. Do you, do you just fold this and let other people deal with it or do you have to go? It's really tough versus under the gun. Um, you're certainly less excited about it. I think it is too much of a short <laughs> stack. Um, I can say that now because Ike's shoved, so it, it must be correct. Right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I think I would end up just just about going with it as well. He, he might be running into a little bit of trouble. We're playing a 60,000 chip big blind, which means this is a what, 14 big blind Rego. Brandstrom's nines. It's another very, very close spot. I'm not going to attempt to guess what might happen here. I believe we are on a pay jump as well, correct? 17? Uh, yeah, with 18 remaining. That's 18th place remains at the regular pay jump. So yeah, the next player out receives yeah. no additional money. Oh, please tell me Couture gets involved here. He does not. All right. So it's 60,000 more for sure to call. He can fold. Thanks. Money jumped in one one spot. I'm sure he was well aware. Oh, I think it's a money jump. Yeah, money jump. One more to go. I guess Shannon's gonna hang tight for a second. This is part of his a new thing that's developed here with shot clocks is that. Now he is perfectly entitled to buy himself some time, wait to see if that 18th place finisher happens to go broke while he burns through his time bank chips. He's five o'clock. <laughs> Announces his hand before he makes the call. That is as unslow roll as you can get. That is a fast roll. Paxton <laughs> shows his ace 10. It is Domination Nation. Shannon Shore, the player at risk. Yeah. You'll be fair, job. Look at Ike. Such a generous soul. 
fine with a chop. Fortunately, it does not work like that. King, queen, four. Ace, 10, the 70-ish percent favorite. Mike still calling for chop opportunities. That is not a chop card. Yeah, that's what being nice gets for you. Too far. And Haxton does not hit his 10 on the river, so Shannon Shore doubles up. Ike Haxton left with crumbs. Shannon Shore back in the game. He was patient off the four big line stack. Made some folds, right. found a hand, got there, doubled up. Ike down the four big blinds. We are balancing look, because of this that, that just Watch happened. Joseph Moalad all in with king queen against pocket sixes, flops and up and down. Hearts now on board, two, three hearts. And Moad bricks everything. Sixes hold. Rocco has been busting souls at this table. Sixty-one thousand euros. So yeah, everyone just laddered up. And we are one player away from the end of the day. And we've got an all in. That's not getting through. <laughs> Pator shoves on Ike, who's got ace king. Ace king in the big blind. What a hand to wake up with off the super short stack. Dominates Pator's jam. He will, of course, be calling. He's just seeing what's going on, Joe. Correct. As you mentioned. And he did. The gentlemanly thing of saying, I, this is not getting through. Yeah, it doesn't look worth waiting. Cold. 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 And wow. pretty quickly comes to the decision that let's just do this. Let's double me up and move on. So Domination Nation, yet again, last time this situation did not work out so well for Ike Haxton. King, six, deuce. One spade. Don't do it, Spraggy. Not as safe as the last flop. <laughs> not as safe as the last flop, he says. <coughs> oh, my Ooh. goodness. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Bad luck, buddy. Haxton not yet. needs to catch oh, yeah, an over. ace nice. on the river. There, there's no way, there's no way you're gonna survive that mistake. Bala Krishna <laughs> okay. assumed it was over, but he knows. Good game, Good game. Yeah. Big Papa Pateur claims another victim. There's an all-in and call out here, up in them streets. Sick race alert, pocket jacks versus ace king. Kimo Kirko is the player all-in with jacks. Rui Sousa with ace king. We are flipping for the end of the day. Ace in the window. Couple of backdoor outs for Jax, as well as the two Jacks hopefully left in the deck. For now, Kimo Kirko is on the chopping block. The turn is no sweat whatsoever. Just a Jack will save Kirko. Kimo Kirko, Kimo Busto at the hands of Rui Souza. 
back to the featured table. This will be the last hand. Is it over? No, we're still in. Small blind versus big blind. The bitter end. Sutsor limped with Queen Jack. Monbrou doesn't want to get too weird. Just going to take the free flop with the four deuce. Jack, five, six. So a gut shot draw for Monbrou Masso. Top pair for Sutsor. This is a situation where Monbrun Masson might find himself kind of getting involved in a pot he doesn't want to. He does flop a gut shot, doesn't stab, checking behind just before the end of the day. You're just Turns a couple of check ended though. You're just a couple of check folds away from making it to day five. Spraggy. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's it's one of those where you get four deuce in the big blind, you're like, okay, I made it to the next day, then all of a sudden you're in a situation where you kind of have a little something, but it must be mentally tempting to just throw it away and, and move on to the next day, right? I mean, just act like he raised preflop. Bomber Masso starts the hand with 23 big blinds. Now, this is something you have to consider here, Spraggy, that if you do make your straight, it's a four card straight board. Isn't yep. it hard to get paid? Um, three is a little bit better than the, the eight because you have a, a less strong straight. Um, it's not necessarily too tough to get paid, I guess. If your opponent decides to bluff, you can pick it off really easily. Talk about mentally checking out. Mombrum Masso, anything but. He's raising the turn with four high. Whoops. Well, the flop checked through, so he might not believe that Suxor has a hand as strong as a jack, but indeed we can see that he does. Off to a river card, 680,000 chips in the middle. That ain't and the strength. And the nine is not it. But if Mumbra Musso was bluffing on the turn with a bare eight or with a flush draw, he did just improve. So I'd wonder if he decides to use this hand as his bluff. I always just assume that my opponent has the hand. <laughs> He's all in. Wowee. That's nearly twice the size of the pot for an overbet. Bluffing the last hand? Uh, yes. Braun no. suggests trial by combat on the river. Oh. Suitsor is not looking like he wants to double up this man on the last hand of the night. Wow, what a bluff. Four to the straight, backdoor flush gets there. My answer is always yes, I'll show yeah, if you full, but I don't want to say it and make you call. Bluff. Great yeah, you bluff indeed. Gets top me. pair to lay it nice. down. Shows the four high okay. bluff. Last nice hand of the night, <laughs> fireworks. <laughs> Nice oh, well done. Good game. Nice. What a great Stop, end to the action. Wow. That's crazy. Is this I, Bastille I, I, I Day? That river. Thank you, Buff. Thank you. What an end <laughs> to day four here on the EPT. Barcelona's always a banger. This is how the feature table is shaping up to end the night. 16 players will shuffle up again tomorrow. Martin Susor, despite that fold, still on top. Big Papa, Bala Krishna Patur, second in chips. Spraggy, thanks so much, my friend. Always a pleasure hanging with you. And we'll be hanging again for day five as we play from 16 down to a final table. You guys have been watching EPT Barcelona. Smell you later.